Okay, Sam. Um, talking about um, Cornwall's little um, cottage industry in the in, in Roman period. So uh, this is a little bit of a curiosity here. Uh, this is a bit of a, a pattern in terms of across the coastal areas of the Roman Empire of uh, creating salt works. But there were some very curious things about these salt works, which has led to um, about four years of experimentation with uh, students that met trying to make salt and, and various other things. Wow, I just, is there a clicker to this or do I just press the, just press the thing? So, um, a few years back, at an, an earlier tag, uh, I met up with a former colleague former a fellow uh, PhD student from the University of Auckland uh, where I did my PhD and um, she had uh, used the uh, ideas of translation from uh, Latour and Calon and um, had applied them in the coastal area of uh, New, uh, New Zealand um, where there's again some very uh, a pattern a typical sort of pattern wasn't quite typical it didn't match the, the general sort of things that were really expected from a particular type of settlements there. So, but when I was looking at these things, <laughs> what's going on? A few things occurred to me that um, maybe there's an idea, an overall concept, but when they tried to apply it into Cornwall, somehow it doesn't quite fit. So they've had to be, do a bit of negotiation to get this thing going in some way, uh, to persuade people uh, to go along with the usual salt working uh, stuff. Uh, but first of all, a little bit about what this, this uh, means. It's a little precursor really to all that network theory that uh, Latour and Calon did later. Uh, but this idea here is that you take uh, elements of networks, uh, the actors, the people, the various things and processes and all the things that go on um, in, in a thing and then uh, so you've got that sort of um, uh, template but then you apply it in new circumstances with new actors, new circumstances, and it doesn't quite work. It's a bit like the act of translation. There's no act perfect translation to anything, because in a D, in, in, not just in the fact that um, words don't always match up exactly, but, it's, uh, but also the social context um, of those words uh, mean very different things to different people uh, in different places. And so it is when you're looking at uh, like material circumstances, as we're going to look at uh, here. So, um, uh, so as a result of this, you can get some really very interesting and unusual uh, formations uh, uh, created out of this, where something is translated, it appears at first sight that you're dealing with the same phenomenon, but somehow it hasn't translated that well. So a little bit about where we are in the world. So this is southern Britain here. We're up here, Cardiff, and this is Cornwall down here, and this is a sort of uh, central and western Cornwall. And uh, these are the known sites uh, of uh, salt works in, in Cornwall. There's a very recently uh, recently discovered one uh, there. Um, uh, so that's not actually in the literature yet. Um, so. Um, and I'll just move on a bit there. Um, oh yeah, just before I leave this, um, nearest big settlement in uh, in this Roman uh, province here is, is Exeter. Exeter was uh, set up as a, a legionary fortress and then uh, settled with veterans. It didn't really have any tradition of proto-urbanism um, proto in this part of the uh, uh, far southwest, so they had to import people who knew what about how to do that. And um, in Cornwall, there's also a very interesting line around here. Which, uh, there's a sort of camel and um, uh, foy rivers uh, where they, they meet somewhere and there's a sort of central ridge going there. And uh, the forts there have view sheds which point not in this direction, down to the south, but they point upwards like that. So the suggestion, this is some kind of imperial estate. Indeed, when you go on later to things like the, uh, into things like the Doomsday Book and stuff like that, that it, it's, uh, it continues to be a royal estate. Uh, a lot of these areas here, quite a concentration of those kind of resources. So uh, it's often thought, well, by those forts, there's a lot of iron works, 
It used to be thought that tin was a big thing, but where, where these forts have turned up, they seem to be more concerned with iron than anything else. But another thing that might be significant is if you're, if you're taking, um, again, by um, sea transport, it's not very good to go right round here because there's lots of rocks and it's very dangerous. Um, and indeed, in um, medieval times, that people used to come around here and then dock into various places along the south coast, cross over the peninsula and get on boats to go up this way a lot safer. Um, and it may be that this happens to be a, this uh, is a sort of route. So you come along here and you go up here um, and along there. Maybe what there's one of the thoughts that maybe this is a, um, a way of supplying salt uh, to um, the Classis Britannica, you know, the Roman fleet. Um, is it something to um, uh, to supply, you know, salt for salaries or or um, uh, other resources, maybe they're salting meat or fish or other things, all those kind of things were the initial thoughts that we had when we were looking at this, uh, this issue. Uh, so here's a little bit about this reassembly of people, resources, networks and things as I was talking about this moment ago. So there are two key problems with the salt works in these, not necessarily all over Cornwall, but in, this, in the selection of locations, you'd normally go for um, for estuarine uh, environments, uh, where there's a higher concentration of salt in the sediments, you wash the sediments, have great concentration, and get a lot more out of it. Or you you harvest the salt, uh, the, so the salt marsh plants, burn them, and then wash them in water, and then extract the salt. They're much more efficient than the locations we're going to look at. It just makes no sense in terms of that. So the low concentration of sodium chloride in these particular areas they chose. Next thing is the low key of of these operations. Unlike, there's a study a few years back by um, Hathaway at Bournemouth uh, University looking at all the salt works through this period across the uh, British Isles and, uh, well, um, Britain rather, and um, noting the different sort of categories of the different types of operation, but the, this, these Cornish operations have their own category. And the peculiar, peculiar thing about them, they seem to be done in domestic houses. They weren't done in any on any grand scale. There weren't sort of uh, great big uh, salt pans and things like that. There were little uh, little hearths inside, uh, uh, pretty much the ordinary sort of uh, dwellings of the time, which were oval houses at that period. Um, during the, the Roman period in Cornwall um, and in South, South Devon, they gave up using round houses and they go for oval shaped houses with sort of ridge pole design. Uh, see on the on the um, on the walls, so no like concentric ring of posts or anything like that anymore in those things. And these were just the normal dwellings you find of anywhere in any kind of uh, sort of uh, local settlement of these things. And and that's what we've got at this particular location. Um, so problem of edible salt concentration. Now one of the things I discovered in doing this is you, you don't simply boil up the salt and you uh, boil up the salt water and you get salt. In fact, you get a whole range of different particulates, including most of the salt is actually not edible salt. It's the things that are called bitterns, named because they are bitter in taste, which can, they can be used for medicinal <coughs> purposes, but a lot of them for industrial purposes of one kind or another, you can use them for. Uh, uh, you get pretty sick if you can see them on any scale. Um, and uh, there's a few other things I mentioned in there, of uh, different things that you can get in there. Um, so the sodium chloride component of these uh, evaporates, uh, uh, evaporates uh, vary according to location. And one of the key things, if you, you do it close in shore, you've got the runoff from the, from the actual land. Um, in one particular location we'll have a look at in a minute, there's actually a, um, a, ri a river gushing onto the beach. It's just, if, if you were looking for somewhere to get good concentrations of, uh, of, of brine it was not these weren't the right locations so um uh, so when you look if you look at percentage these uh, percentages of uh, salt in salt water um uh quite can be quite low anyway but they're significantly low if you're you're really up close uh, to the land in this way um now here's uh, one of the locations here this is uh Khan Green bank and uh, you can see in the distance the sea of Mount's bay and these are really, really high cliffs here. I mean, water weighs quite a bit if you try and light it up things. And you're going up, you're going up kind of this kind of uh, 
uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, slant to get up to these things. Uh, next thing here, this is Ever Rocks. It's another location. It's again sited above the water. This is the other thing about these locations. They're not really down on the right on the water. Those uh, um, that one was pretty high up. This one's a little bit lower down. But just off the around here and down this way is a stream pouring into the water. Um, next thing, a Tobaba. And here's you've got a little bit of one of these oval houses eroding out of the, the cliff. There's remains here. There's a little half, a stone, a stone line sort of um, or, yeah, half or kiln uh, you've got there uh, to heating up, heating up the water there. Uh, a lot of the, there's a lot of boulders here, but unfortunately they're not really part of the original setup. They're actually coming from washed up stuff from a local quarry. But the significant thing is about these is these, pe these boulders and pebbles actually fly in quite a way in, in land from these locations. So, uh, you know, even when you've got sand, this is, you're going to get a lot of stormy weather and materials being uh, come up from the sea. This is not a great place to be um, in terms of a, a living thing, a living location, even though you've got that. So there are two factors make it different these things um, one is the small scale and character of the production units and the next is the uh, um, next thing um, form of the bricotage is also very different now the, it's this sort of uh, thing and um, one of the sort of things we thought maybe it, it, uh, instead of the conical formations they usually have these things these would be quite long trays about this sort of side so they were they're creating out of it but what if they're making garum out of this? this is a small scale garum production possibly but then we looked at the scale of that it really isn't worth it wouldn't be worth doing um so this is where we come with some conclusions to what they, they might be doing and uh when you get to the uh late medieval and post medieval period there's a massive industry it's the next time you have any any kind of a state organized society with urban centers and things like that the big thing people are after is fish uh, migrating fish they come quite close to the cornish coast and various places including the lizard that that little peninsula bit where most of those sites were con concentrated the pelagic fish uh, migrating fish come very close and if you're up on these high areas you can see out to those places and in the me uh, late medieval and post medieval period they had lookouts on it to look out for the migrating fish to call the communities to come and go with nets to haul them out. A suspicion is this is the main thing. That's what they're after. And then they gut them and tail them. And then what they're going to do with these guts and tails? Well, they make a little bit of salt stuff on the side and make some garum. But it's not the main purpose. It's, it's something that they've just adapted into a way of making extra out of the, out of the main product rather than just dumping uh, lots of guts and tails and stuff like that. Um, so, um, so that's where I'm going with that. Then, if you want to follow further adventures of that, we've got um, in previous issues of the Salt Coat, so this is a, a Salt um, Heritage Journal. Um, and there are a few articles, and think, um, uh, two or three articles of there. There's one actually should be out very shortly, which actually includes the, the this sort of results that uh, we're talking about here. But there's some earlier things, stages in our experiments that uh, are written up in that, and. Um, Right there? Oh yeah, just so a few keys, two key sources there, come on at all. And this is that original study of the salt works in the um, Iron Age and Roman period in Cornwall. Okay? <laughs>